Lee suggested that uh, I start off with something that would grab your attention, so I'm going to show you a map that should grab your attention. Um, it's a map of the 18 biosphere reserves in Canada, and, and you'll notice one that kind of stands out. Um, this is the, the Satwe Biosphere Reserve, approved by UNESCO just a few months ago, back in March. It's the size of literally all of the others put together. And uh, not that size matters, and I'll, I'll get into that, so just be, be reassured that, that while it really stands out on the map, it's, um, it's basically recognition of what exists, not something new, although the designation is certainly new. First of all, I, I just want to go through quickly the, the schedule of events. I want to talk about what a biosphere reserve is, because that's a, a bit of a mystery to most folks. And it's a misnomer, I'll, I'll tell you that up front. Uh, where is the Satwe Biosphere Reserve? Well, you can see for yourself. How did the designation come about? What's a little a short history? Why it's important? What, what we're doing now and uh, the challenges and opportunities and next steps ahead? Okay, so Biosphere Reserve. It's a misnomer, as I said. It's not a reserve. It's not a, a new conservation layer. It's a, it's a designation by United Nations that essentially recognizes uh, exemplary, uh, e exemplary um, work being done in regions across the world in uh, promoting sustainable development. So it's a, it's a gold medal. It's not a, a new regulatory overlay. It's not a new conservation uh, regime. It's not an intrusion by the United Nations in domestic affairs. And believe it or not, that was a concern that some people had. It's a gold medal. It's a, a gold star. It's uh, the United Nations, UNESCO is recognizing, recognizes some 660 regions in the, in, on the planet that uh, warrant this kind of special status, special designation. And uh, the Satwe Biosphere Reserve is one of them. It's recognition, endorsement, promotion, and encouragement by UNESCO and the Man in the Biosphere Program. Man in the Biosphere Program is, again, another misnomer. All this stuff, the, the words date from uh, the 70s and haven't changed much since. And that's the way the United Nations works sometimes. So, um, same map. The, the Biosphere Reserve, Satwe Biosphere Reserve, includes the entire Delaney District and Great Bear Lake, the watershed within the Delaney District and Great Bear Lake. Um, and as I said, it's uh, larger than just about all other uh, biosphere reserves in Canada combined. Plequot Sound, um, Mount Aerosmith, both on Vancouver Island. Beaver Hills in um, central Alberta was designated at the same time that Satwe was in, in March this year. Waterton uh, National Park, Waterton Lakes area region including National Park. Redbury Lake, Riding Mountain, uh, Niagara Escarpment, Long Point, Georgian Bay, and uh, the Bredor Lakes and, and points in between. They all have uh, some common features and I'll, I'll get into that. But, uh, in the case of the Satwe Biosphere Reserve, the, the, the Man in the Biosphere Program looks for areas, regions that have core conservation zones, that have special management zones, and have development zones, all in the one region. And they're managed sustainably by the authorities responsible. So in the case of Satwe, the, the core areas are Sawyue Dacho and Adaila, and the, uh, the islands within Great Bear Lake that have all been identified either through Parks Canada, in this case, or in the uh, Satu land use plan in, in terms of the conservation zones. And these are all the, the green areas and then the, the, lake, the islands within the lake. And then there's uh, the southern extension of Tuktuk Nagate uh, National Park, which will become uh, formally designated at some point as uh, a national park within the Satu. The, um, the point that I'm trying to make here is that, again, it's nothing new. This is the context, this is the, the framework that, that uh, worked within the Man in the Biosphere program. It's got all the ingredients that, that the program requires. So how did this designation come about? Well, um, 
I don't know how many people here are familiar with the Yamaraya legends and stories, but one of them is really pretty uh, central to the Satwe. The, uh, the elders uh, tell the story of Yamaraya coming to the region and uh, there were giant beavers at the time. And the giant beavers were causing a lot of grief for the, the residents in the area. So Yamaraya pursued the beavers, uh, there were three at least in Great Bear Lake, uh, pursued them through the lake down the, uh, the Great Bear River and uh, captured them at uh, the site of Toledo now. And the hides are, are on the, uh, the cliff face opposite Toledo. But they, so Yamaraya did this uh, in the interest of the people there, but the deal was, as he said to the, uh, the Dene, I've done this for you. Now it's your job to take care of the land, to be uh, the stewards of the land that, that you, uh, you want to be and, and need to be. So in, in return for removing the beavers, the deal was struck that uh, the Dene would become uh, sound stewards of the land. And that, that story is still told and, and is really central to the, uh, the elders of Delaney, at least. And, uh, and I hadn't, I'd heard part of the story before, but I hadn't heard the tail end of the story, the deal that was struck. So since that time, Delaney, the people of Delaney, have been really, uh, uh, have felt very strongly attached to the, the lake and the watershed and feel a moral responsibility to take care of it. And they lost that, uh, that ability to care for the land through the, the colonial period and, and are just now starting to regain that stewardship that they, uh, they held at one time. And they're, they're regaining it through a number of building blocks and, and I think most people here are familiar with all of these. The final uh, land claim agreement the Great Bear Lake Watershed Management Plan. There are some folks here who are actively involved in, in developing that. Um, it's also called the Water Heart, and I'll talk about the Water Heart in, in a second. The Sawtoo Land Use Plan, and most recently the Delaney Final Self-Government Agreement. Those are all the, the building blocks that uh, uh, enabled the nomination to go forward and, and enabled uh, UNESCO to approve it. That nomination process started uh, I guess initially about three years ago, I, I went to Delaney following up on some work that, that folks had done on the watershed management plan um, and a sense of kind of unfinished business because when we developed the watershed management plan, the intent was to roll it into the Sawtoo land use plan. That didn't quite happen. The, um, the land regime, the conservation zones, special management zones did, but the rest of the uh, the watershed management plan didn't really become incorporated in the land use plan. So I thought, well, maybe there's something that uh, we can do to heighten the awareness of the management plan and, and the uh, importance of Great Bear Lake and the watershed. And I'd retired from government at that point and had a, a small foundation that was interested in, in pursuing some, um, some sustainable development, conservation, uh, stewardship, ideas in, in the NWT and so I suggested this to them and, and they agreed subject to Delaney's agreement that uh, they would be interested in supporting some work in that. So about three years ago as I said I went back to Delaney and, and uh, talked to the elders and the Renewable Resources Council and the, the chief and council and said you know this there, there are a couple options uh, for kind of the icing on the cake to recognize the progress that Delaney has made in, in regaining its stewardship role. And one of them is uh, an international biosphere reserve designation. Another was a World Heritage Site designation. Um, and I made it clear to them that none of those designations would change the regulatory framework. It's not going to change the land use plan. It's not going to bring the United Nations to your doorstep and have the United Nations tell you what to do. It's, it's more recognition by the international community that there's something very special here and there's something very special being done to be sound stewards of that area. So the elders in particular uh, thought that was a good idea and, uh, and gave me the go ahead to start working on the, the nomination. 
I got to tell you that uh, if you think bureaucracy is, is complicated in the NWT, you ought to see some of the United Nations stuff. The, the nomination form, just the form itself, without the answers to the questions, was 50 pages long. And by the time I was done, it was 150 pages with maps and, and uh, other stuff. But uh, over, there was a bit of a, a pause while the devolution uh, discussions were going on. And then about two years ago, um, kicked it into gear again and started working to finalize the nomination. We put the nomination forward in um, May of last year to the Canadian Commission for UNESCO. Uh, it went to the United Nations, uh, UNESCO headquarters in Paris in September of last year and was approved in March of this year, which by United Nations standards is the speed of light. And there are a couple of reasons for it going quickly and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit. But the first, the main reason was that all that work had already been done. The watershed management plan, the regulatory regime, the, um, the land use plan, the self-government, and, uh, and sponsorship by an indigenous community, which is unique. That's, that is the first, and to my knowledge, the only uh, biosphere reserve internationally that was sponsored by a community from the outset, an indigenous community uh, from the outset. Most of them don't really involve it, the indigenous residents, and those that do, uh, for the most part, the indigenous residents have come in later to become part of a done deal. So, uh, why is it important? Well, as I said earlier, it's international recognition of the approach that Delaney has taken. It's the first biosphere reserve championed by its indigenous residents. It's the largest in Canada, the only one north of 60 in Canada. One of the largest in the world and one of a very few north of 60. There are a couple in the States, there are um, in Alaska, Greenland, um, and uh, a few, a handful in Scandinavia and Russia. But um, it's, it's a special, uh, unique is overworked, but I think it's unique um, for all those attributes. Um, it enables, this is really important, and it, it's, it's a designation, it's an honorary designation, it doesn't change anything, but it opens doors to a whole lot of opportunities. Um, including the, the family of Canadian Biosphere Reserves, the Canadian Biosphere Reserve Association. Delaney, the Sautoy Biosphere Reserve is now a member of that. Uh, I sit on the board of directors. It opens up opportunities for economic development, tourism in particular, research and monitoring opportunities, visitation by other Biosphere Reserve uh, folks, and capacity building throughout that, learning what it's what it means to be a biosphere reserve is, is a really important governance experience. Um, we established a society. Most folks in Delaney don't know what being a director on a society means, and now they're learning. Um, and now they're, they're becoming uh, really quite aware of, of the significance of their achievement uh, because of the interest being expressed by um, people all over the world at this point, uh, including the 160 members of UNESCO. So what's happening now? Well, we've set up um, a stewardship council. Um, it's represented, representative of all of the uh, organizations in Delaney. Um, Parks Canada sits on it. Sautu Renewable Resources Board sits on it. We have four elders and two youth. And uh, that's up and running. It's a, established as a society under the NWT Societies Act. We have a reserve office. Uh, we have part-time staff. We renovated the old mission building. If people are aware of um, buildings in Delaney, there, there was an old mission that's been renovated now, largely through volunteer labor by the community. So we've got a physical presence. Um, we've established research and monitoring priorities. There's a, a long list of those. Got a website under development. It should be finished very soon. Anyhow, the, the, the designation celebration um, will be on, on August 11th. The charter leaving here in the morning, returning in the evening. Uh, I think we've got 32 seats, not all of which will be taken. So if people are interested, 
get in touch with me and uh, you can come up to Delaney for the day and, and be part of that celebration. Um, we're building capacity. As I said, we've got a part-time coordinator and a number of other people involved in, in the uh, biosphere work uh, in one way or the other in Delaney. So they're learning and uh, we're all learning as, as we go through this because well, who else is, has established a biosphere reserve in the NWT? So it's, it's a first time thing. Funding support, that's a, one of the key challenges. It's a work in progress. We're dealing with foundations and, and other agencies to find support, um, ongoing support. We've got cooperative programs with Parks Canada, Sayue Adacho, um, cultural programs and so on. And we have regular bi-monthly meetings in, uh, in Delaunay of the Stewardship Council. So the next steps, well, self-government. What does that mean for the Biosphere Reserve? Because everything's changing in, in Delaunay. Uh, the Land Corporation will disappear, for example, and the Land Corp is a member of the, the, the uh, council. Um, Renewable Resources Committee will, uh, Council will still be there, but you know, the functions are changing, so we're gonna have to, to try to figure out how best the biosphere can uh, reserve organization can serve the, the interests of Delaunay. And I think, it, I think if you look at it as a, a non-government organization, arm's length from, from the parties that are actually making decisions, because in and of itself it is not a decision-making group um, beyond the, um, the limited uh, opportunities it has to sponsor research and monitoring programs and so on. So it's um, that's a that's a work in progress. Training for the uh, stewardship council so it can be self-sustaining uh, in the long term is a work in progress. Research and monitoring program implementation. We know what the priorities are from the community perspective and, and from the from the researchers' perspective, but uh, opportunities to fund those programs are are going to be um, limited, and we'll do what we can to to encourage. Um, attention and, uh, and activity in the region, but it's gonna be uh, opportunity-based. Uh, for example, NASA is running some uh, low-level remote sensing lines uh, through the NWT in the next couple of years, and so we've made arrangements for them to fly over the, the biosphere reserve, at least a, a couple transects. When we'll get to actually be able to use the data is a different story, but at least the data will be collected. And they're doing that because it's a biosphere reserve. And the NASA folks think, yeah, that's great. We should help that. So it's an, uh, one of the examples of the opportunities that arise just because you're on the map. Uh, funding, capacity building, they, they go hand in hand. Uh, I touched on it earlier, the linkages with other biosphere reserves, national and international. And uh, there's a lot of interest and direction from the um, from UNESCO that, that we reach out to um, biosphere reserves that have similar attributes. Uh, Lake Baikal, there's a biosphere reserve established there. Uh, Lake Titicaca in South America, a biosphere reserve. Um, the Great Lakes in Canada and the US have aspects of biosphere reserves. So, so we'll be doing that too uh, as uh, the days go by and building on tourism and, and related economic development opportunities. I mean, just the, the, the process of engaging people in Delaunay and, and bringing uh, some funding support into Delaunay over the past uh, couple of years has probably added 200,000, 300,000 to the, the budget of Delaunay, to the, you know, the elders' honoraria, the, the honoraria paired to, to other members. Um, people visiting the community to find out more about the Biosphere Reserve. So there's been a lot of benefit already. Um, challenges and opportunities, well, <laughs> they're kind of the same, as it turns out. Funding, capacity, training and education. The opportunities are funding, because you're on the map. Capacity building, because you're on the map and, and you're going to be attracting funding. Training and education is part of capacity building and economic development. There are econom real economic development opportunities. Um, so I'm, I'm coming to the end of this thing. I just thought I'd throw some photos in that 
kind of highlight why the area is important, what, uh, why people want to uh, ensure that, that the cultural and, and ecological integrity is maintained while they develop. And some of you probably know the uh, photographers responsible for these shots. But pretty remarkable. Um, beautiful place. There we go. Uh, Paul Vesci again. And this is just outside Delany. Um, at a cultural camp at Sayue Dacho, that's actually a, a moose stomach. Um, I think this is at uh, Adila. And again, the cultural camp at uh, Ansayue Adacho. Uh, they're um, preparing a moose hide in the background. And the last shot, I thought I'd, I'd throw that up there. Paul Vesci and uh, um, I don't, probably not a cell photo, but it's close to a selfie as you can get. And, uh, and I, I heard on the radio the other day that Charlie Naelli had set a net out just in front of his house, and I don't know what he said, 20, 30 feet of water, and pulled in a 51 pound lake trout. So, so you don't have to go far to catch big trout there. So that's it. Um, I hope uh, you've got some questions. I hope I can answer them. Um, well, there are four elders, so Charlie, uh, Naeli, uh, Alfred Tanaton, um, Jimmy Dillon, um, uh, gee, well, one other elder, I can't remember his name right now. I wish I'd had the list with me. Two youth, uh, Sidney Tucho and uh, uh, Mitchell, um, I forget his last name, and then um, Raymond Tanaton as the chair of the Delaney Renewable Resources Council. Um, Mike Nielly uh, as the Sawtooth Renewable Resources Board Rep. Um, Parks Canada, it's Diane Andre now, um, who's the Parks Canada head in <coughs> Delaney. Um, the Land Corp is um, Danny Bea. Um, and I'm j just trying to go back to the elders. I can't remember. Um, the elders uh, rotate and, and more people show up than are actually members of the council, but that gives you an idea. Some of it, uh, the elders, the honoraria is paid through the, the foundation. The, the members, uh, Renewable Resources Council, for example, pays, they pay for their own members. Um, this is not a, um, an opportunity to offload costs. You know, I've reminded folks that this is their project. And uh, so the, the other members, um, organizations cover their, their time um, through honoraria. And then we pay for things like uh, lunches and hall rentals and stuff like that. Although, for the most part, uh, the Land Corp has, has contributed in kind those services. So it's a combination of funding from different regions. I got some funding the other day through the, the Gordon Foundation for training to be a member of the society. So there are you know, things like that, that you know, small amounts, but they add up. I, I approached the Clicho um, about two and a half years ago and asked them if they wanted to be part of it. And they said, eventually, yeah, but in the meantime, go ahead and uh, get it finished because if, if we waited for them, uh, given their, the state of their uh, government evolution, it would be a long time waiting. The elders are interested in approaching their counterparts in the Clicho, but I think it'll, it would be wise to kind of get their feet underneath them first, and then see about expanding it. Because uh, about a, I guess about 35% of the watershed, Great Brother watershed, is in the Cleachow region. So. Climate change. Um, you know, I, I, I gotta be clear about this. The, the, the designation is not intended to uh, prevent sustainable development. And in fact, that's 
fundamental to the designation that it, it enable sustainable development, and that includes mines. Uh, if there are, there's no p apparent interest right now. Uh, there's some exploration going on, but the, uh, the whole point of the exercise is not to, is to remind people of the values that make this area special and to ensure that when development does go ahead, if it does go ahead, it maintains those values. That's the, that's the key, and that's... Um, folks in Delaunay would not have supported this if it meant, or most of them anyhow, wouldn't have supported it if it meant no future development. They simply wouldn't have done it. They supported it because it underscores their approach to development, to sustainable development, to conservation in the area. Um, but it doesn't change the rules. It just reminds people of the importance of this area and the importance of um, when development does go ahead of, of doing it right. And that's something that we should all be reminded of no matter where we are. Well, they can recognize it, but it won't add any, any sort of um, oomph to it. It's right, it will be recognized in the Nunavut land use plan as a, you know, a, a transboundary uh, consideration. The transboundary waters flow to, to Nunavut. Um, so there's, you know, it, it, it enhances, I suppose, the importance of uh, doing things right and reminds people that there's something special here. I mean, I, you know, it'd probably be worthwhile putting it on the map in uh, what's left of the, the NWT conservation strategy as a, it's kind of like in the land management, it's a, a notation on the map. It doesn't do anything, but it's a, it reminds people that there's something there that people should be aware of if, if they're going to um, um, do anything on the land. The basic goal is to achieve recognition of, of the approach to stewardship that Delaunay has, has developed. It's, a, it's a, an example to the world. So that's achieving that to, to show the rest of the world how sustainable development can be implemented in, in this particular way. It's, it's also to uh, recognize the efforts of Delaunay itself to, to uh, ensure that the people of Delaunay appreciate what they've achieved. And I sometimes think that, that we underestimate that. It's a huge achievement and, and recognized, rightly so, by UNESCO. Um, so the, those are kind of the so intangibles, if you like. The tangible things are, are developing capacity in Delany, bringing resources to Delany, um, improving our knowledge of the region through research and monitoring programs that will be stimulated by, the, by recognition that this is a special area. Um, all in, in the end, I think it, it's to recognize what's been achieved, to encourage uh, continuous improvement, and to acknowledge um, that the, the people in Delaunay who were so instrumental in, in regaining their stewardship abilities feel good about what they've done, and the world acknowledges that. Parks Canada is uh, a member of the, the Stewardship Council. The, the Parks Canada supported the Biosphere Reserve nomination. Uh, they've, each uh, Biosphere Reserve um, has to have core protected areas in it, wherever that biosphere reserve is. And often it's a national park that serves that, that purpose. So in, in the case of uh, Satwe, it's um, Parks Canada in the Sayue Adacho context and, and the ultimate extension of Tuktuk Nogate provides some of the core protection. And they're full partners and full supporters of this. We, Got a, received a letter of congratulations from the Minister of Environment and Climate Change, who's responsible for Parks Canada as well. So, not competing, uh, supporting one another. No. <laughs> In fact, UNESCO doesn't uh, give a dime to this project. They've recognized the area as as worthy of um, international recognition, but they don't contribute funding. So they, they, 
they'll, uh, they'll help in terms of promoting and, and uh, um, making people aware of, of this approach, but in terms of funding, no, sadly. It's a really good point, because that, that, that fabric is there. <laughs> a little, uh, little puzzle I'll, I'll throw out to you folks. Um, the Biosphere Reserve recognizes the regulatory regime, the designation recognizes the regulatory regime that applies in Delaney and the rest of the NWT. It recognizes the core protected areas that apply in the, in the Biosphere Reserve, but are also present in the rest of the NWT. It recognizes land use plans. It recognizes a self-government agreement. It recognizes the Mackenzie Valley Resource Management Act. The GNWT has not seen fit to, um, to acknowledge the importance of this designation. So uh, I think part of the answer is, uh, I don't think the GNWT is particularly interested in that approach. But I think the other point is that, that it's, um, it's a little special in Delaney. Uh, with all those ingredients in one place, in one small community. And, and LNA was interested in making the effort. Uh, nothing to say that somebody in the Saw 2 couldn't pick up the same ball and, and do that. I doubt that, I shouldn't say that, because the uh, Biosphere Reserve in Greenland is effectively all of Greenland. Um, I doubt that, that UNESCO would have the appetite for dealing with an NWT-wide Biosphere Reserve, but you know, if, um, if what this designation does is recognize the way we do business in the NWT, why not? But ironically, the, the proponents of that way of doing business don't seem terribly pleased with this designation. Tell me why, I'd be interested. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a little foundation called 444S. It's 444S. And uh, good luck to you for to finding out anything about them. I've done plenty of web searches. They're very private. They're very, it, uh, their money comes from uh, family, uh, some wise investments by uh, the creator of the family foundation years ago. And they, uh, they help out in small ways where communities are interested in, in uh, their support. But it's, it's called 444S, based in Seattle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They, that was part of the um, description of the area and, and the challenges. You know, Biosphere Reserve, doesn't mean um, you start from a pristine point of view. It, that's part of the, the baggage that every biosphere reserve has. Uh, I mean, there's different baggage, but none of them are uh, uh, clean, pristine, um, without challenges. And this is, in this case, it's, that's one of the challenges. Well, you know, if I were, um, holding a, a claim in the area, and, and we did have a map um, in the nomination that, that showed that all the land or the uh, mineral claims. I wouldn't be worried about it. I mean, I, it's easy for me to say, but we made it very clear in the, in the nomination and in subsequent correspondence with UNESCO that um, a, min uh, a mining developer, a mine developer, a proponent would would not face any additional scrutiny because of this designation. The expectations would be the same. Again, it's, the designation reminds people, highlights for people the importance of the area, but it doesn't change the regulatory regime, doesn't change the land use plan, and it sure doesn't change the views of the people in Delaney. So if I were a proponent of mining in the, in the Delaney district, I would be more concerned about explaining my project to the people of Delaney than I would be about this designation. Designation is just a reflection of how people feel, but it doesn't change the rules and it doesn't change the map 
and it certainly doesn't change the views of the folks in Delaney. It's the Delaney district, so that exists. That's, that's not going to, this doesn't change that. It's, uh, in fact, it's a little bit, tiny bit less than the Delaney district. Um, and it, if you go back to the, the days when we were developing the watershed management plan, the folks in Delaney and, and others involved in that recognize that you can't protect Great Bear Lake without protecting the watershed. You can't. I mean, the, the water quality in Great Bear Lake is going to be affected by anything that happens in the watershed. So it's one deal. It's one package. But it doesn't change. The designation itself doesn't change the maps, although it's nice to see it on the map, and it's empowering uh, to a degree. But in terms of the um, um, ramifications of that designation, no matter how big or small it is, it's... It's, it, it's an acknowledgement of the work that folks in Delaney have done to re regain their stewardship. And that applies to the entire district, not just a part of it. So size doesn't, on the one hand, size doesn't matter. On the other hand, yeah, it, it's, you know, it's as well as Lee invited me to do, get your attention early. <laughs> and, I, and I think it, it does. And it, it's, um, you know, I, I guess I, I would say that some of the smaller biosphere uh, areas have bigger challenges than this one does and present bigger challenges than this one does. Size, the Niagara Escarpment Biosphere Reserve has far more challenges and, and perhaps um, uh, creates more uh, concern in that region than, than this one does. So I didn't have to be this big, but that's what Delaney wanted. And that's what Delaney wanted from the outset in the, the watershed management plan. And that's what Delaney wanted in the, the, the uh, land claim negotiations. It's their district. And it's their lake. And it's of fundamental importance to them to, uh, to ensure that, that changes, uh, developments, when they happen, happen in a way that, that meet the needs and aspirations and and visions and uh, um, values of Delaney. All this designation does is say, from the UNESCO perspective, right on. Keep doing it and do it well and improve and be an example to the rest of the world. I'll just add that I think we should all be, re I mean, folks in Delaney in particular should be really proud of, of this, this achievement, but we all should. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's been pointed out, this is the way we do business in the NWT, or so we say. A um, little odd to me that, that the, the government that promotes these values um, has still yet to acknowledge officially this achievement. A little disappointing. Thank you all.